Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a messy textured quiff complemented with a skin taper through the back and sides and explaining the steps in achieving this look. Before I start, I'll separate a box section through the apex of the head, working with the natural hair growth patterns through the contours and the crown. I'll start with the connection point through the sides. Due to the nature of my model's hair type, for this haircut I've decided to work with diagonal graduation working forwards in the direction that the hair will eventually want to sit. As the hair is super straight, by taking these sections diagonally, this will reduce bulk through the contours and provide a head-hugging shape which will appear square but is ultimately triangular. My first section is going to be at the point where the hair growth pattern at the crown starts to change direction. This will be the most responsive and potentially most tricky part of the haircut. I like to start working through the right hand side of the head first as I find this side the hardest. I'll then come back to the point of the crown where the hair starts to change direction. I'll change the angle of my fingers and work through the crown and the left hand panel of the head. When working through the crown, be sure to follow your guide by elevating from the scalp in order not to take the hair too short. Elevation through the crown is essential to retain enough length and weight for the hair to sit flush. Through the top, I'll start with a profile guide. This will determine my choice of length and shape. Once establishing my choice of length and shape, which will be horizontally triangular, I'll then divide the top into two panels. I'll push my profile guide into the right hand panel and use it as a guide working vertically forward from the back to the front of the head. When working my sections forward, each section will be over directed back to the previous to ensure I'm following my guideline being aware of my client's head shape and not distorting the shape by leaning too far forward. As the look we're aiming to achieve is quite textured and messy, I'm point cutting my shape into the haircut to provide maximum texture. As I'm keeping each section square to the profile guide moving forward, this will give me a difference in length between the apex panel and the contour in which I put before moving to the left hand panel. I'll then re-establish my initial profile guide and work through the same technique in the left hand panel of the head. Before moving to the sides, I will cross check the horizontal shape by standing on the left hand side of the head to ensure I've instilled a triangular shape before applying some matte paste and blow drying it through the hair. With the sides of this haircut, I've opted for a tapered look. I'll be tapering through both temple areas and through the nape whilst leaving some darkness through the body of the haircut. This works well for clients who still want a fresh looking haircut but don't want the harshness of a fade and want to keep scalp exposure at a minimum. It's an amazing option for clients with difficult head shapes and gives them the feeling of a fade as a silhouette is still slim. I'll start through the temple area and use a number 2 guard open to clear out any bulk. Next, I'll establish a zero guideline roughly an inch or so below and use my foil shaver to take it down to skin. As I don't have much room to blend out this guideline, I'm going to use a descending technique which will allow me more control and will allow me to fit this taper into a tighter space. The motion and fluidity of this technique is important to achieve the result you want. By being loose and fluid with the clipper, it is adding to the graduation as I work from my number one open to closed. And when the motion is correct, it means I can go straight from my number one to my 0 0.5 and to my zero with minimal adjustment, just consistency and technique. A clipper with a tapered blade is needed for this to work effectively as the bevel will aid you in keeping discipline within the technique. Once I've worked down to my zero guideline, I'll go back through with the one and a half guard to soften the transition at the rounding of the head before using some scissor over comb to refine. Using my trimmer, I'll then sharpen the temple curve and I'll repeat this process on the opposite side of the head before working through the nape. I start through the middle of the head with a number two open, then close the gauge and establish the color spread. Once I'm happy with this color spread and blend through the middle, I will divide the back into two panels, the right hand side and the left hand side of the nape. The reason for this is if I tried to blend this out looking at the haircut from one static viewpoint, I will be likely to leave the corners too dark. The goal is for the haircut to be visually pleasing from all angles. Using the same descending technique I used to the temples, I will then work my number one guard open to closed, 0 0.5 and 0, playing with the lever until I'm happy with the colour spread. Before using my one and a half guard to smoothen the blend out fully, I like to line up behind the ears. This will help me retain some darkness to make the blend pop when using my 1.5 guard. Using some scissor over comb, I will work through the whole right hand panel, softening the graduation and connection point between the top and sides. This brings me to the refinement stages, where I'll be putting my finishing touches on the haircut, mainly using my scissor to add texture and definition. To style and finish my look, I'll use some volumizing dust and some more matte paste to add definition and structure. 
Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. If you have a question, leave it in the comment section or any suggestions for future videos. Stay tuned for some more videos in the near future. Thank you.